Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. What's going on with you, my friend? Your old pal Joe here checking in with you on a motherfucking Friday. Oh, we made it to the weekend. How about that happy Friday, you bad, crazy motherfuckers? How's it going? How's it hanging? What have you been up to? How's your week been? Listen, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing better than you ever thought you possibly could be doing. And if you are not, hey, that is A-OK. But it's fucking Friday. What the fuck else you've been doing all goddamn week? Get your shit together, people. It's the weekend. What have you been doing all goddamn week to where you don't have your shit together? It makes no sense. We do this week after week after week. And for some reason, you're still trying to blame somebody else for your trials and tribulations in life instead of looking in the mirror and going, God damn, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not putting in enough work. Maybe I'm not trying hard enough. But God damn it, I hope you fucking are. All right, people. I hope you fucking are. Listen, got some shows coming up. Going to be a busy month. I will be in Lowell, Arkansas tonight and tomorrow at the Grove opening for my buddy Aaron Weber doing some clean comedy. I'll be in St. Louis next weekend, the 17th and the 18th at Helium opening for Aaron there. And then the 19th, St. Louis, I'll be headlining the Funny Bone. Come on out to that one, baby. Still in St. Louis all weekend. Opening for my buddy and then headlining my own shit like a real goddamn comedian. How about that? Um, the 24th of March, I'll be in Chattanooga at Stone Cup Cafe, and then rounding out the month, I'll be in Syracuse at the Funny Bone, opening up for Aaron Weber. I'll be in Austin, uh, April 14th, I'm at the Creek in the Cave then, working on some more Texas shows. It has been... Uh, fucking trying my patience to say the least. I also got some stuff in Lexington coming up in May. A whole lot of stuff in Kentucky actually in May. Paducah. We got Knoxville at the end of the month. Go to joekellycomedy.com for all the upcoming shows. Gonna be a busy couple of few months here for your old pal Joe. How you been my friend? What's been going on with you? What have you been up to? How has your week been? If you're watching this on the old YouTube I'm wearing a fucking bathrobe. You're goddamn right I am, people. I'm chilling, feeling good. You think I got something underneath this bathrobe? I don't. Got my fucking balls sitting on this chair right now, just fucking resting on top of the old thigh fat. You know what I mean? Just fucking sitting right there, resting up, perched, ready to go in case something fucking comes in and it needs to attack. You know what I mean, people? Wearing a robe, chilling. It's Thursday night. I'm recording this for you. I'm sorry I didn't get a podcast out to you this week, people. I, um, listen, usually I got some shit going on, but I've been here. All week with my computer, I just haven't had no goddamn power. Ladies and gentlemen, I was <laughs> I was without power for about, fuck, almost five days. Pretty close to five days, people. And uh, yeah, so I didn't get a chance to do the podcast. That's my, uh, my apologies to you, you know? My apologies. <laughs> what a few days it was. On top of not having power, I was also sick there a little bit last week. I think the uh, fucking uh, just being on the road, being up in Michigan, you know, fucking drinking with family, not taking care of myself that great. I think it all caught up to me. So I wasn't feeling too great. And then the power went out and then I was just shit out of luck there for a few days. But, you know, if the power is going to go out, if you're going to be sick, I guess that's the best way to do it. But uh, five whole days took me back to my van living days, people. I kept thinking about maybe getting in a hotel room, you know, trying to relax a little bit, but I did not. I fucking wrote it out like a goddamn soldier, people. Wrote it out like a goddamn soldier. Neighbors on the left, they took off. Neighbors on the right, they took off. Everybody left the fucking block but your old pal Joe. Sat here like a motherfucker and just held the fort down. Really because I got nowhere else to go. I don't have uh, family or friends up here in Clarksville, Tennessee. So I just fucking was chilling. <laughs> With no goddamn power. A storm rolled through last Friday. Rolled through Tennessee last Friday, right? Knocked out the power pretty early on in the day, which I already wasn't feeling that great anyway, so it was fine. I was just in bed. And then uh, around 4, 4 in the evening, 5 o'clock, something like that, uh, some of those electrical trucks showed up, and they were doing some work. And I was like, great, we'll have power back here in about an hour or so. And in about an hour or so, they did leave but uh, they only fixed half the street. 
So the people on the other side of the street, they had power, but uh, these few places that I'm in, we did not. But, uh, you know, had nowhere to go. Just took lessons from uh, living in the van, you know, because my phone, when I lived in my van, my phone never died, people. Never, ever died. And I didn't have like a, I didn't have an outlet in the van or anything like that. But what I did have was a laptop. So if you got a laptop, you just plug that phone in that motherfucker. It'll charge that fucking thing right up for you. You know what I mean? You ain't got to worry about it. These are all lessons that I learned long, long ago. So basically, Sunday through Tuesday, I just got up in the morning, went to a coffee shop, did some work, charged my fucking laptops. Basically, I took two laptops, was charging them both. Really, really took me back to being fucking homeless, you know what I mean? But realistically, a laptop is nothing but a large uh, portable charger. You know what I mean? So if you think about it like that, people are like, what are you, how'd you make it fucking work? It's pretty easy. You just got to be a little bit savvy. You know what I mean? Couldn't have no coffee, no lights. I couldn't cook any food here, but I uh, made sure I had fucking power, you know? And one more, or at least had my phone charged, had my phone charged and my laptops charged. So what else do you need? I didn't have any internet to use the laptops here, but you got the fucking uh, hotspot, you know? So it was pretty. It was a pretty easy few days for not having power for uh, for almost a fucking week. But it does, man. It does give me perspective. And I don't know how you what your guys' living situation is. If you're in an apartment or if you're in a house or whatever it is. If you're on the grid. If you're off the grid. It's uh, just this situation of waiting around and not getting answers from anybody as to when our power was going to be turned back on or if it was going to be turned back on. I reached out to the landlord. They're like, ah, oh, we don't have anything to do with it. Called the, uh, the electric company. They're like, ah, oh, we don't, we got a lot going on right now. We can't fucking deal with you. Uh, but basically it's like, man, I got to get some, uh, you know, you got to be prepared for this shit sort of thing. I got to get some solar panels, but I don't think uh, solar panels in a rental unit, especially a duplex is the best of ideas. But uh, that's just where I think, you know, I think it's a good investment. If you don't have solar panels, I think you should have some. Not to be completely, I mean, if you can completely be running off solar panels, I think that's a fucking great situation. But just to have some to not only reduce the uh, the amount of bills, the amount of uh, the, your electricity bill a little bit, but in case the, you know your shit does hit the fucking fan, which it does seem like shit is continuing to hit the fan over and over again, you got to be prepared. And there are uh, there are ways for us to be able to be prepared without having the uh, to be on the electrical grid. I think solar solar panels are uh, something I'm going to have to invest in here soon. First, I need some land. But if you ain't got solar panels, what the fuck are you doing? How do you handle... I mean, I guess a lot of people have generators now, gas power generators, you know? I uh, I don't. I don't have one of those. But I heard they're pretty fucking good. You yeah. know? Fucking crank it up, put a little gas. But what happens when they fucking stop making gas affordable and then you got a generator runs on gas? Ain't going to be no goddamn good. I don't know. It just... Uh, it's like, yeah, I should be. I should be better prepared for power going out than having to sit around and wait and just kind of hope that somebody fucking shows up and saves the day for me. I felt helpless and I don't like feeling that way. I'm a pretty self-sufficient person. I hope you are too. You know, if, uh, I think you can be too. Even if you're not right now, you definitely can be. You don't need to rely on everybody for everything all the goddamn time. You got all the power in the world in your fucking belly, people. In your nuts, in your vagina, in your tits, wherever. Somewhere in your body. I can't fucking find it all the time, but it's somewhere in there. You don't need these motherfuckers, but... Oh, man, I just felt like such a little bitch. Just waiting around going, oh, no one's coming to save me. And uh, I felt like there was nothing I could do about it. And I just don't want to be put in that situation again. So I think some solar panels are going to be uh, are going to be in the future here. As long as, as well as not being in a fucking duplex. The best part of it was, people, no shitty neighbors for about five days. That was fucking great. I had no power, but it was pretty, pretty fucking quiet. Uh, the old homestead around here. And that was pretty good. But... Uh, yeah, I got fixed Tuesday, pretty much Wednesday morning. I, dude, I'm not even going to lie. I got so excited. It was, uh, I just got back from the coffee shop. This would have been Tuesday around 4 o'clock, right? 
And uh, I sat down, was here for maybe 30 minutes, something like that. And then the fucking, you know, all the fucking trucks start showing up. Everybody starts showing up. They sent like seven fucking trucks, all with the buckets and everything like that. And uh, they had to send a a crane too, because I get a tree fell on our big fucking whatever you call those trash cans that hang on the telephone poles. What are those things called? Power inverters, converters, whatever the fuck they are. You guys know the fucking trash cans up in the sky. Uh, a tree had fallen on that, so they had to use the crane to get all the tree off of it and shit like that. But dude, those trucks sat around for the longest time, not doing a goddamn thing all the electrical bucket trucks and shit like that. They had to wait for the tree to get cleaned up. But uh, I just was sitting going, okay, at any point in time, it's going to get cleaned up. Power is going to turn back on. It's going to be great. And uh, I saw him load the crane or get the crane in the backyard and start cutting down the tree. And I'm like, great. It's probably like 6 o'clock, 6.30 now. I'm like, this is going to be fucking fantastic. Going to have power in like an hour. You know what I'm going to do in the meantime? I'm going to get a workout in, get a little sweat since I haven't done that in a few days. Haven't been feeling good. Haven't been able to shower because I got no hot water. And I was like, I'm just going to fucking work out. And then by the time I'm done working out, fuck, I'll probably have electricity by then. Wrong. Fucking wrong as can be, dog. Fucking wrong as can be. By the time I got done working out, it's, let's say, 7.45, 8 o'clock, somewhere in between there. So about 45 minutes. Um, By the time I'm done working out, the fucking crane truck still here, but I look out the window, dude, and all those fucking electrical trucks are gone every single one of them. And I just start going, Oh no, they're going to, this is going to be a three day fucking project now. And, uh, God, it was just fucking terrible. Just the, just how quickly deflated I felt. Cause now I'm fucking sweaty. I can't fucking shower. Cause I, I, I got no hot water. I could be a Joe Rogan about it and fucking cold shower it. But after four days without a shower, dude, you just want a hot one. You know what I mean? You just want a little bit of comfort in there. But, uh, yeah, so it's like 8 o'clock. All the electrical trucks are gone. The fucking crane guy's still there doing crane shit or whatever. And I'm like, all right, this might uh, this might be a few more days, but I'm hoping they come back real quick and fix everything. Uh, come probably around 10 o'clock, another two hours or so, all of a sudden – I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to lay down on this couch since I can't really clean up. I don't want to get in the bed with my fucking stank. You know what I mean? You don't want to get into your bed unless you are an absolute piece of fucking garbage. Unless you, and listen, I'm a nasty human being. I think we all know that on this podcast. But if you're sweaty and get into your bed without showering, you're fucking disgusting. You know what I mean? And then you don't wash your sheets. You're fucking vile. You probably let your dog sleep in the bed with your sweaty fucking ass too. It's fucking disgusting how people treat their beds. (laughs) I'll do some nasty shit in that bed, dude. I'll do some fucking vile, horrible shit. Shit that'll probably send me straight to hell. But I ain't gonna fucking be in that thing dirty. I know that much. What the fuck? But anyway, so I'm like, well, let me at least just lay down for a second on this couch. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And uh, I don't know if I dozed off or what happened, but all of a sudden I didn't hear any noise outside anymore. And I looked out the window, crane trucks gone, no electrical trucks. And I was just like, dude, I said it out loud. Again, it made me feel like a bitch. I just was like, there's no way this is happening right now. I was like, this cannot be a possibility that that I'm still not going to have power, you know? And like 15, 20 minutes came, went by and then three more trucks pulled up and I'm like, great, they're going to fix this shit. Probably be another hour or so, you know? So let's say it's 1030 now at this point. I'm like, dude, I'm just chilling, sitting on the couch, starting to get a little sleepy because I've been going to bed earlier, but still stinky, still not feeling great because uh, I'm just dirty. And, uh, I just keep have like another hour, maybe another hour. It's going to fucking get turned on fucking a little after three in the morning, dude. That's when the power came on. It was like, holy fuck. I just, I just, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I guess it was a fucking hard job to fucking, uh, get that shit turned back on. You know, I appreciate the electric company. I appreciate all the workers, but what the fuck, dude? 
It took almost 12 fucking hours from them. By the time they, from the time they showed up to the time they left and had the power back on 12 fucking hours, dude. I've never been through such a thing before. And it would have been fine if I didn't get all my fucking hopes up. Like the goddamn power was going to be turned back on in a fucking hour. You know what I mean? (laughs) Anyway, that's what happened this week. Power got turned back on. I took a shower and I went the fuck to bed. That's what happened (laughs) Wednesday fucking morning. But that's why the podcast is getting fucking a little bit late this week, people. That's my bad, okay? My apologies. But what a fucking... The four days were fine. Just not having power I was fine with. But just the expectation of having my power come back on and then it not coming back on was fucking heartbreaking, you know? And maybe I should uh, take that lesson into life a little bit more. Don't expect anything ever. (laughs) I think that's a pretty good fucking lesson. (laughs) Never expect anything. Even, Even when it's right in front of your face and you could see it. You know what I mean? If someone's bringing you a fucking uh, ice cream cone and they're walking it, they got their arm out, they're walking right towards your face and they can see you locked on that fucking ice cream cone. You're like, God damn, they're going to bring me an ice cream cone. And then they get a half an inch from your face and then turn to the left and give it to some fucking idiot fucking child. You know what I mean? That's fucking heartbreaking. Because you thought you were going to get the ice cream. You thought you were going to get the power back on by six o'clock. You thought you were going to have some dinner, you know? I was so excited. I even took, not that anything was frozen at that point, but I took I took a steak out of the freezer and was like, man, I'm going to have a steak tonight. It's going to be nice to be able to cook some food. It didn't happen. Didn't happen until the next day. But anyway, don't hope for anything ever. Don't expect anything ever. That way you won't ever be let down. You can just appreciate everything for what it is. And, you know, you won't be fucking sitting in your own ass sweat at 2.30 in the morning going, I just want to go to bed and I can't because I'm dirty and sweaty and smell bad. And I'm not going to get into my fucking bed that way. Because this is what <laughs> this is what happens when you get into your bed all sweaty and then you get into it when you're not sweaty, you get fucking itchy because your shit's all dirty, dude. That's why I don't like, I don't understand why people let their dogs sleep in their beds, you know, and people don't, I know dogs bathe themselves or whatever it is, but y'all out there with dogs letting them sleep in your beds, y'all ain't fucking washing them enough to, to let them stay in your bed. I've been in some beds where people let dogs stay in there. There's a fucking, you can feel the dirt in your sheets. You're just so used to it. It's like when you're fucking, when you smell so goddamn bad, you just get used to it. I went to the fucking gas station yesterday. Smelly motherfucker. Smelly ass motherfucker working at the gas station. I get that, you know, maybe that's where you're supposed to be for smelling so goddamn bad. But how don't you, I don't, how don't you know that you smell like a sack of shit when you go into work? How do you not know that your bed feels like there's a fucking layer of dirt all over it because you let your fucking dog sleep in it, man. And I get dogs or family and you're lonely or whatever the fuck it is. Get your fucking dogs out of the bed, people. It's disgusting. And I love dogs. I'm a do- I let a dog lick me in the mouth right now. But it ain't going to sleep in my fucking bed because that's fucking nasty. All right? That dog can can tongue the back of my fucking throat. But it ain't, it's sleeping on the floor. I might give it a mat on the floor, but it ain't staying in the fucking bed. That shit is disgusting. It's nasty. You know? And that's back when I was in Nashville with my roommate and they had that cat. If you remember the cat, what the fuck was that cat's name? Uh, Damn it, I'm blanking on the cat's name that was my friend last year. But my roommate had that cat and it would come and hang out in my bed and sometimes lay on my chest and shit like that, you know? And now that cat's not around, I can still smell it in the fucking mattress, dude. I've washed the sheets, I've washed the bedding, I can still get a slight hint of cat in that fucking bed sometimes. And I didn't know that was a thing. I've never had a pet sleep in my bed. Everybody else is doing it. I'm like, how bad can it be? It's, it's fucking with you forever now. 
Now my bed smells like a goddamn cat. I ain't been around a cat in fucking months, dude. What the fuck? It's disgusting. I can't. I'm not for it. I don't support it. Listen, whatever mental illness you have that allows you to sleep with a dog in your bed. More power to you, I guess. More power to you. Don't try and deal with your problems. Just let a stinky, smelly fucking dog lay in your bed. That's what you do. Don't try to adjust your life to try and deal with all the fucking broken circuitry that's going on in your brain. Whatever mental illness you have that you need a stinky ass fucking dog to ruin your goddamn bed, go for it. Have at it. I'm not here to change nobody. It's just fucking disgusting. That's all. (laughs) Oh, man. What a few days it was. What else is going on? Tennessee. We'll talk about Tennessee real quick. Big, big fucking news shit going on in Tennessee. They are, uh, Tennessee, I believe, is now requiring drag performers to acquire some sort of of permit in order to to uh to perform their their drag performances or whatever it is uh, i think the main reason is so children won't have access to drag performances which you know it's been uh it's been it's just been interesting to hear the commentary around it obviously people are like that's a good thing kids don't need to be around drags queens or whatever it is and then other people are like that's transphobic and hateful and this that and the other and every other fucking word you could possibly think of to uh not really have a valid argument for a thing more or less listen i'm not against drag queens at all let's be it we could all be honest here on the old podcast sometimes you see a drag queen you go god damn look at that sexy fucking thing you know what i mean but i'm an adult i'm not a child i don't understand <laughs> I don't understand this this need or obsession with adults wanting to destroy their children. You know what I mean? And regardless whether or not you're a drag fan or you're not a drag fan, there's no way, there's no way a dude in a thong doing the splits is good for any child. Any of them. There's no way that doesn't fuck them up in some way. You know what I mean? But I think it's just the thing where every adult's so fucked up. They're like, well, I'll just fuck up my kids so I don't have to be a lonely, fucked up person. Again, rather than dealing with your own fucking shitty issues, maybe you just like drag shows. Go to a fucking brunch drag show without dragging your fucking child to it. I don't understand why we need... You can't bring children to comedy shows. You can't take children to R-rated movies. You never. You don't see many children at like concerts that are like adult-oriented. You know what I mean? Machine Shop is the... There's a venue in Flint called the Machine Shop. I used to go to it a lot. Never any kids there, my friend. So, uh, you know, it's... And again, it's like now it comes down on the fucking drag queen performers where they feel uh, alienated and isolated that they have to get a special permit to perform and they have to do this, that, and the other and jump through hoops. And it's like, they're not, I don't think the drag queens are necessarily the ones that are targeting children. Maybe some of them are, but it's more these fucking lunatic fucking single mothers, these single mothers and half gay dads, that's who the fuck is taking their kids to drag shows, you know what I mean? And I saw one that was like, it was like an outdoor drag show, but these fucking people drag their kids to it. And there's a kid, probably six or seven years old, just looks fucking traumatized. You know, again, there's a dude doing the splits in his booty shorts or whatever. And the poor kid's just covering his eyes and his mom's just fucking sitting next to him, smiling, laughing, having a great time. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are we doing with children to where it's like, just leave them alone. Let them do their own things. How come, how come they can't have their own things and we can't have our own, our own? Why do we have to have this integration of everybody and every, when it's not for them? It's the same thing with like fucking breweries, man. When I worked at that brewery in Georgia and people would bring their kids in, it's like, there's nothing here for your child. It's alcohol. All it is is beer. I mean, we got some sodas. Yeah, that's for DDs, though. That's not for your fucking four-year-old child. Like, what are you doing bringing your child to a bar? 
How empty is your life that you need to go to a bar and you don't have enough time or money to hire a sitter or whatever it is, so you got to drag your fucking kid to it. Go putt-putt and hide a flask in your sock like a normal good parent does. Why the fuck are you coming to a brewery? Why the fuck are you taking your kids to watch men in dresses? I don't understand it. I also don't understand the complete outrage that, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's, uh, it's they're being mean to drag queens. It's like, no, they're not. Not really. Not really. You know what I mean? It's just not for kids. But again, it comes down to the parents. But, uh, you know, I... Because apparently parents don't know how to parent, or maybe you should. Maybe you should be able to allowed to parent however it is you choose to. So maybe I'm maybe I'm on the wrong side of the argument. Maybe if you feel like the the best thing for your child, mentally, physically, just their overall well being, is to take them to a drag show, then maybe you're right. Maybe you're the right one, but. I always thought of drag shows as adult entertainment. And I just don't understand why. I just don't understand why people are taking their kids and just fucking, you're just ruining your kids. You know what I mean? It's like the internet's going to ruin them soon enough. Why don't you give them a, why don't you not fuck them up for a couple of years? (laughs) It's had such an outrageous thought. Is that so fucking bizarre? You know? I was just talking to somebody about it yesterday. And they're like, oh, they're banning drag in Tennessee. It's like, they're not. They're not banning drag. They're making drag queens choir acquire a, some kind of permit or specific license to be able to perform. And it's all under the, the guise of protecting, uh, protecting children. But uh, what the fuck do I know? I don't have any fucking kids. If I did, if my sister took my niece and nephew to a drag show. My sister loves it. She goes to drag queen bingo all the time. She ain't taking her fucking kids there. I know that. And if she did, I'd have to go, I'd have to talk to her and go, what the fuck are you doing? And I'd hear her out too. I'd go, what, what, how does this benefit your child? Oh, it makes them more acceptable of people living different lives. And it's like, well, great. Do whatever the fuck it is you want. We're, uh, it's the end of an era, my friends. We're all, this is, I believe this is how, this is how things fall apart when we have to, you know, make laws to go, hey, please stop trying to fuck up your kids so much. <laughs> hey, maybe they don't. Maybe kids love it. Maybe kids love it. But I, I doubt they'd love it if it weren't for their fucking uh, weird-ass parents, you know what I mean? And again, there's nothing wrong with drag queens. There's nothing wrong with having fun. There's nothing wrong with doing any of that shit. But uh, it's just fucking wild, the things that we'll run children through and then wonder why things are all fucked up. And it's like, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't be watching a dude spread his ass cheeks on a fucking picnic table. <laughs> at 11 in the morning on a Saturday, you know, maybe that has something to do with it, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about kids fucking (laughs) going to drag shows? (laughs) I just think if kids, if kids are able to go to drag shows, dude, clean comedy just shouldn't exist. All right. It shouldn't. If kids can watch a dude shake his ass cheeks, then, uh, I feel like I I feel like I should be able to tell jokes in front of these same kids, you know what I mean? I should be able to tell my filthy fucking jokes in front of them. But maybe I'll try that. Maybe they'll do an R-rated comedy show for children. Do you think do you think anybody would uh would bring if I did it at like eleven in the morning on a Saturday, do you think anybody would bring their children to come listen to me talk about eating buttholes and ass fucking and all that fun stuff that I do. <laughs> I hope not, dude. I hope they fucking wouldn't. I wouldn't have any respect for somebody if they brought a child to one of my comedy shows, you know? A teenager, maybe. Fucking 15, 16, fuck yeah, come on through. But you're not a fucking six-year-old. That's absolutely ridiculous. I also saw a friend of mine. He's a gay guy. Lives in Tennessee. 
He's very upset about the whole drag thing. It's fucking hurting him to the core. So he posted something where it was a picture of Beyonce. And uh, it said, this is okay. And then it had, the next to it was a picture of a guy wearing the same outfit as Beyonce and saying this, but this is not okay. And I don't think it's the outfits that are... Beyonce's not spreading her ass cheeks in the afternoon for children. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there is a difference. <laughs> not in the dress, but in the dick and the stuff of the kids. <laughs> do you reach it on that one, dude? That's all I was fucking thinking. But anyway... How do you guys feel? Fucking let me know. Email me. Let me know in the comments what the fuck is going on in your mind. And, uh, you know, who gives a fuck anyway? It's all going to shit. I just, I watched a documentary while my hair was drying. <laughs> uh, you get a lot done while your hair dries, man. I don't know if you guys know that. Most of you, most of you fellas out there, you ain't got, you can't do shit while your hair is drying, dude. I got fucking, I do a lot. I get a lot done. Well, my hair's drying. You know what I mean? I cooked. I fucking watched a documentary. I fucking cleaned up the bathroom a little bit. I got a lot done when my hair was drying. Most fellas can't do that. But it was all about, uh, the documentary was all about deep fakes. You know, people superimposing people's faces onto videos that aren't, uh, that aren't necessarily them. And the AI voice generation stuff. And uh, it all seems pretty terrifying at this point. Because especially if it's on the internet or on TV at this point, even if, I mean, it's going to come to a point where they're going to be able to deep fake, um, I think, real life. You know what I mean? They already did. It'll be the same thing like Tupac at Coachella, where it was that hologram shit. That's nothing but a deep fake, right? Same thing. So uh, it's it was just saying that basically it just kind of laid out how the, the, the progression of the deep fake and how quickly it's come along. I think the first real ones, what they were saying, I think it was like 2017, 2018, where everybody started putting Nicolas Cage's face on everything and a bunch of Mike Tyson ones, but they weren't doing the deep fake voices. And uh, now it's gotten to the point, I forget, it might have been last year where somebody deep faked this Jordan Peterson thing, where not only was it him talking, like his voice talking, but his body, like the whole thing was a deep fake. And I think he was, I think the deep fake was him condemning the German government, something like that. And uh, anyway, he came out and was like, this is not good. This is a bad thing. I didn't say this. And it eventually people figured out that it was a deep fake. But bro, we're on a slippery slope right now, just with everything, I think, technologically wise, I think just society wise, especially in, in America, I think we're fucking falling apart at the seams here a little bit. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know how to get it together either. When we're in a place, in a position in time where you don't know what to believe. And I think I've talked about that. I think I talk about this all the fucking time, but you know, what the fuck, what the fuck is going to come of all this shit, dude? Where the fuck are we going to end up? Because it's blatant that the media lies. It's blatant that the politicians lie, you know, and now you can make, now it might not even be, it will be a lie, but it's like, you know, you'll be like Jordan Peterson condemn the uh, German government and they're like, well, that's not true. But then you're sitting here going, well, I just saw the video of him doing it. You know what I mean? So even if you see it, now it's not true. And it's, it's like, whew, man, oh, man. I think I think the kids of the future are going to have enough fucking problems without going to drag shows when they're six years old. You know what I mean? It's like, when does it stop? And does it ever stop? Is, am I a deep fake right now? fuck could be dude you don't know you don't know if this is really me or not it could be <laughs> it could not be nobody fucking knows but man oh man 
it's just getting to the point where now you can't even you can't you can't trust what you hear, you can't trust what you see, you know. So where do we go from here? Where does how does this all play out? You know. How does it all come to an end? Because we all have access to the same, basically the same information at the same rates of speed, I guess would be the way to put it. You know, we can all get the same information very quickly, but like, where does it go? Where do we go? Where do we find truth at? In ourselves. That's the only place that we can really look for truth now. Everything outside of ourselves is becoming a lie and a manipulation of what the truth really is, and it's become a show and a charade, and maybe it always has been, but more so now than ever. You see everybody watching people live their lives on the internet, and most of them are fucking lying about how great their life is, and you know, and they go, oh, I, I took this product, and now I have abs, and really, they've worked out every day their entire life and they're just trying to make some money off this product and it's all fucking everything is just this monumental lie around us people and it it seems to be cracking at the seams but maybe it's just maybe that's just me maybe everything's really fine and maybe the fake people on the internet are not to be worried about at all it's just every dude, the more I just stay plugged into the world, the more I do just want to get solar panels and just live on a fucking slab of land somewhere. I've wanted that forever, but I fucking uh, that's why I moved to Maui, people. That was like one of my original intentions. Ten years ago, when I moved to Maui, was like, dude, I'm done. I'm done with all this bullshit and lies because I saw it back then. I saw it back then. I saw the farce and I saw the charade that everything the world offers you. And I didn't want anything to do with it. But then I had this inkling in my heart where I was like, I want to do comedy. So let me plug back into the world. And man, I wish there was a balance between the two somewhere. But uh, yeah, I think if if you have the ability to have land and you aren't quasi off the grid in some way, or you aren't semi self sustainable, you're a fucking idiot, dude. I see all these houses. Everybody owns these houses. They got these yards. No one's got fucking solar panels up. No one's got them on top. It's like, why not just have some just in case? You know what I mean? Just in case. Just again, to save a few bucks every month on your fucking electric bill. Why not have some solar panels? Because no one's really thinking about it. They got too much shit going on to be bothered with it. I just don't know why people don't have solar panels and chickens if you can. It's bizarre. But uh, but yeah, that's why I went to Maui. And I was like, I don't want to deal with this fucking horse shit of a, of a fake world that we're living in, you know? And uh, here I am talking to a fucking camera into a magic wand microphone right now. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, dude. I think, like, I did that DMT at the beginning of February, right? You guys remember that? Where I didn't really blast off, but I feel like it did, it did change something to me. It did something, dude. I can't even, I can't even look at groceries the same anymore. I got a thing of spinach, because I like spinach. I make shakes with my spinach, and I eat them in salads and shit like that, dude. I mix up some tuna with it, a little tuna salad, you know? And, uh... I can't even look at this spinach from the store anymore. It looks fake. It looks, it's the same spinach I've always got. But ever since I smoked that DMT, that little, that little trip I had, it just, the colors don't look right no more, dude. It looks fake. It looks processed. It looks like a plant you put in your fucking living room that never dies. I mean, it does die. The the spinach definitely will rot and get smelly, but I don't know. What is this world that we've uh, that we've come to live in, where everything seems to be fake? It's a tragedy, but it is what it is. Hey, might be a tragedy, but it's a lot of fun. We get to drive real fast and fucking come a lot. It's fucking great. <laughs> what more do you need in life than driving fast and coming all the time? You know, that's all you need. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Not bad for a Friday, right? We didn't spiral on this one, I don't think. 
Didn't fucking, uh, I don't think we got sad today. Maybe we got a little inquisitive, something like that. Let's get you the animal video clip of the week and get you on your way, people. I'm feeling great in this robe. I like having my chest out a little bit. You guys can't see it because the microphone is in the way. But man, I like having my chest breathe a little bit. There you go. You got a little sneak peek of the middle of my chest there. For you audio people, you're missing out on a whole lot of the show by not watching it on YouTube, all right? Just saying. Maybe I'll start putting these videos on Spotify, too. I think I can do that. Anyway, we'll figure that out another day. Animal video clip of the week so we can get you on your fucking way, my friend. This video coming to us from the great website, worldstarhiphop.com. It's uh, apparently, I'm assuming this is in India. Sometimes I assume... (laughs) If I turn on a video and I don't understand the language and they don't sound Asian, I assume it's from India. (laughs) Is that wrong? (laughs) That's just what I do. I go, oh, these people aren't fucking Chinese or Korean or something like that. They must be fucking Indian people. But uh, it's a bunch of people at a zoo, right? And the video just starts, the title of the video is Drunk Guy Climbs Into Lion Cage. And you know those are my favorite type of videos, big cat fucking something up. But uh, dude, I think everybody who's been attacked by a big cat in their life, they should listen to this drunk guy. He's like the fucking lion whisperer. Is He's just, uh, he's like talking. He's just like yelling at the lion, just face to face with the lion, just fucking yelling at it, barking at it, telling it to go over here and go over there. And the lion's listening to him. It's a pretty interesting video. Everyone else is freaking out. But, you know, the whole video is just a guy talking to the lion, going, come here, go there, do this, do that. And then towards the end, people, the crowd starts to get riled up a little bit, but the video pauses with like eight seconds left. So you can hear the audio, but you can't see no video. And no one's screaming or anything like that. So I don't know. I don't know what happens at the end of the video, but I think we can all hope that that motherfucker got ate by a lion. If you're going to be drunk, I mean, that's the way to go out is, (laughs) I meant, I didn't say that right. If you're going to be eaten by a lion, you might as well be drunk. Not if you're going to be drunk, you might as well be get eaten by a lion That'd be a terrible fucking life to live. Imagine that. Every time you got drunk, there was a chance that you would be eaten by a lion. That's pretty fucking... I wouldn't be... I fucking wouldn't be drinking, dude. I don't think anybody else would, too. What is this? Why are people getting fucking spam fucking text messages right now? My bad. I got a fucking spam text. And someone's like, hey, follow me on Snapchat. It's like, I don't fucking even know who this number is, dude. But anyway, check out the link to the video in the description. Also, God damn it, I forgot it again. Fucking come hang out on Discord sometime. There's a link in the description of the podcast for the Discord. Come say hey. There's a couple few of us over there. We just chit chat, check in with one another, say hey. It's just a place for, <coughs> excuse me, positivity. Just to say, hey, maybe share some news stories, some videos of your own, you know what I mean? That's all it is. But if you'd like to chat a little bit more, come on over to the Discord. I think we got a, a, there's very few of us right now, but it's a good few group of people. Whatever the fuck, you guys know what I meant. Anyway, listen, I'll be in Lowell, Arkansas at the Grove tonight and tomorrow with my buddy Aaron Weber. St. Louis, the 17th through the 19th, 17th and the 18th at Helium, opening for Aaron, headlining the Funny Bone on March 19th, Sunday in St. Louis. Also got Chattanooga this month, Syracuse, New York, Austin next month, somewhere in fucking Napanee, Napanee, Indiana next month, Lexington. Paducah, Knoxville, all sorts of shit going on. JoeKellyComedy.com is where you can get the uh, correct info for all the shows and whatnot. Listen, I'm sorry the podcast was late, my friend, but better late than never. All right? I'll be back Monday for sure. So you're going to get 
a double dose of me real quick. I notice podcasts don't usually do that well on Fridays either. People got their other shit going on. But I'm putting it out anyway, motherfuckers. So thanks for checking out the podcast this week. Listen, before you get out of here, do me a favor, all right? Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And I'll catch you around real fucking soon. Later. YouTube, what the fuck? I'm sorry. I missed you, you know? I didn't mean to. I had no power. I had no fucking, I was sick. I have every excuse in the world. (laughs) But I'm sorry I missed you. I'll definitely be back Monday. You know what I mean? I got a new camera too. I'm trying to get that shit figured out so I can uh, film the podcast from it. But um, I should have more stand-up clips for you coming up soon too. That's the idea with the camera. It's like, man, I'm doing, uh, when I'm doing the shows with Aaron, I pretty much stick to the fucking set and just kind of keep it, you know, pretty bare bones, pretty professional, just doing the job. But uh, the more I'm going out on my own, the more I'm kind of playing on stage and bullshitting and talking to people. So I want to uh, get you some more clips of the stand up coming up soon. All right. So that's it. I love you. As you know, I fucking love you. All right. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you do some cool shit with your time, all right? Nice weather's coming. It's going to be good. We got fucking nine months. Do we got nine months? Nine and a half months of the year left. We'll call it that, all right? Where's the time going? I don't know, but we still got plenty of time to make great shit happen together. All right, my friends, have a great weekend. I'll catch you on Monday, all right? Promise. Unless this fucking power goes out again. Unless this fucking power goes out again. Take care of yourself, all right? You bad motherfucker.